Here we're going to look at a nice number theory problem from the Swedish Math Olympiad. So this is from the 2002 edition and it is question four. And our goal is to find all natural numbers n that are bigger than or equal to eight such that n to the power of one over n minus seven is a natural number. So let's maybe look at this and see why n bigger than or equal to eight. Well, it's really clear that you cannot have n equals seven here, because if you have n equals seven, well, you're gonna have n to the one over zero, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Then if you have n equals six, well, notice that's gonna be n to the one over negative one, so that's gonna be n to the negative one, and then that's clearly not a natural number. And then similar things happen if n is equal to five, four, three, two, or one. Okay, so now before we look at a solution, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of hints. So one hint that I maybe didn't write here, which is pretty standard whenever you're trying to look uh, at a problem that's like this, where you find all natural numbers satisfying some condition, is that there's probably four or fewer such natural numbers, which means you really wanna find a couple of small ones and then see what goes wrong for the large ones. In other words, why you can't have natural numbers satisfying a condition like this after a certain point. And that like really feeds into my two hints. So my first hint is to explore, and this is like something to do with a lot of these type of problems, but I think with this problem in particular, it's super helpful to do a little exploration and that can really feed into your solution. And then next, you're gonna prove an inequality which will help um, really show that you have all of the solutions. And this inequality should be built off of your exploration. All right, so go ahead and give this problem a go with these hints, then we'll come back with a solution. Okay, hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution. Like I said in my hints, we're gonna start with a little bit of exploration. So I'm gonna make a chart, values of n, and then values of n to the one over n minus seven. Just to get some sort of idea for what the solution should be. So here, let's do eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then maybe 13. So notice if we plug eight in here, we have eight to the one over eight minus seven, so that's eight to the first power or eight. So we found one of the solutions already, so n equals eight gives us a natural number. Now let's look at nine. So if we plug nine in here, we'll have nine to the one over nine minus seven, so that's nine to the half, which is equal to three. So again, we've got a solution. Now let's go ahead and look at 10. So we'll have 10 to the one over 10 minus seven, so that's gonna be 10 to the one over three. But the cube root of 10 is not a natural number, and we can see that pretty clearly. Like, the perfect cubes go from eight to 27, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, so that makes 10 not a perfect cube. So in other words, that's not gonna be a whole number. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at 11. So 11 to the 1 fourth, that's what we'll get now. 11 minus seven is four. And then here we'll have 12 to the 1 fifth, 13 to the 1 sixth. Okay, great. So now maybe one of the most important things to notice here is that all of these numbers are less than two. And how could we see that they're less than two? Well, maybe we could see they're less than two by the fact that two to the fourth power is equal to 16, which means 16 to the one fourth is exactly equal to two, which means 11 to the one fourth is gonna be less than two. And then two to the fifth is equal to 32, which means 32 to the one fifth is exactly two. That makes 12 to the one fifth less than two. And then similarly, if we have two to the sixth, we get 64, but 64 is bigger than 13. We kind of have the same thing going on here. So let's just go ahead and point out that these are linked here. That's kind of our explanation for why those are less than two. But now we wanna claim that is true, and we wanna actually claim that this kind of thing holds all the way down here. In other words, any time n is bigger than or equal to 11. So let's go ahead and make that claim. So claim for n bigger than or equal to, well, to 11, we have n to the power of one over n minus seven is less than two. Great. 
And I should point out that it's also clearly bigger than one. So it's clearly gonna be, be between one and two. Maybe I'll put here that this is clear. And the fact that we have a strict inequality here means that that's not gonna be a natural number. Then we, if, we, if we get it strictly less than two, then it can't be a natural number either. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the proof of this. So like I said, we will not show this clear part. So we will show that a one, sorry, that n to the one over n minus seven is less than two. And that is equivalent to what we get from raising both sides to the n minus seven power. Notice raising it to the n minus seven power is equivalent to a raising it to a power that is bigger than or equal to four because we have n bigger than or equal to 11. So that's gonna be equivalent to showing that n is less than two to the n minus seven. But now we can multiply both sides by two to the seven, which is 128. And notice that this is equivalent to showing that 128n is less than two to the n. Now this is something that we should intuitively know is true because an exponential type of function will dominate um, a linear function as long as you go far enough out regardless of what this coefficient is of the linear function. Now I should say that once we've got it down to this point, maybe the easiest way to prove it is by induction. So I'll maybe go ahead and write that right here. The easiest way to prove it is by induction, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently just to see another method. So we're gonna notice that this inequality is equivalent to the inequality showing that two to the n minus 128n is bigger than zero. And that's equivalent to showing that the function f of x, which equals two to the x minus 128x is bigger than zero for x bigger than or equal to 11. So if we can show that this function is always positive for x values bigger than or equal to 11, then we have that it's positive on the natural numbers bigger than or equal to 11, but taking that all the way back up, we have our goal inequality is satisfied. So maybe I'm gonna erase this bit and then we'll get to showing this inequality involving the function. Okay, so we reduced this goal inequality down to showing that this function f of x, which equals two to the x minus 128x is positive for x bigger than or equal to 11. And I should point out again that this is not the simplest way to do this. The simplest way to grab this inequality is by induction, but I think it's important to see other methods as well. So the way that we're gonna do this is we'll start by noticing that f evaluated at 11 is positive. And we can see that because we will have two to the 11 minus 128 times 11 but that is going to be strictly bigger than two to the 11 minus 128 times 16, but that's equal to zero. Notice that two to the 11 is the same thing as two to the seven times two to the four. But now we've got this strict inequality here, so that means we've got f of 11 is strictly bigger than zero. So let's maybe underline that part right there. Okay, so we've got that this function is bigger than zero at 11, and now we're gonna show that it's an increasing function. So if we can show that it's an increasing function that's bigger than zero at 11, then that means it's gonna be always bigger than zero. So let's maybe reiterate that. We're gonna show increasing, and we're gonna show increasing using calculus by showing that f prime of x is bigger than zero. And in fact, we only need f prime of x to be bigger than zero for x bigger than 11, but we'll see that we'll get f prime of x bigger than zero more often than that. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this thing. So the derivative of f of x, that's gonna give us the natural log of two times two to the x minus the derivative of 128x is just 128, so we get something like that. Now we're gonna use what I think is a well-known inequality involving the natural log of two, but we're gonna prove it just in case right at the end of this video. So this is going to be strictly bigger than one half times two to the x minus 128. And so that's true because the natural log of two is bigger than one half. 
So you can show this a number of different ways. We'll show it one way at the very end. But now we're gonna use the fact that x is bigger than or equal to 11 to extend this inequality. So all of this stuff is gonna be bigger than or equal to 1 half times 2 to the 11 minus 128. Again, if x is bigger than or equal to, to 11, then 2 to the x is gonna be bigger than or equal to 2 to the 11. That's pretty clear. But it's pretty easy to see that this is bigger than zero. So notice this is essentially two to the 10 minus two to the seven, but two to the 10 minus two to the seven is positive. So let's see what we've done. We've got F evaluated 11 is bigger than zero. And then for all X bigger than or equal to 11, we have F prime of X is strictly bigger than zero. So in other words, we've got a function that is positive at 11 and it's increasing everywhere after 11. So that means it always has to be positive. So that means we have established this claim using calculus, maybe with the one small gap that we still need to show that the natural log of two is bigger than half. So maybe just to fill in that gap, let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to finish this thing off by proving that the natural log of 2 is bigger than a half. We're actually going to sketch out a couple of different reasons why this is true. So maybe our first reason will involve the following fact. Notice that E is less than 4, so it's well known that E is 2.718. But that means, and I should say maybe also it's bigger than 1, but that means that the square root of e is going to be strictly bigger than two and strictly bigger than one. And so next, we see that the natural log of x is an increasing function. And that's pretty clear because if we take the natural log of x prime, we get one over x, which is always positive on the domain of natural log. But now we can evaluate this inequality with the natural log and we'll see that the natural log of one is less than the natural log of the square root of e, which is less than the natural log of two. But that tells us that zero is less than half, so we don't really get anything interesting out of that, but we do get a half from the natural log of the square root of e, which is less than the natural log of two. And so if we look at this, this is exactly the inequality that we wanted up here in green. So maybe one other way to see this inequality quickly is by the well-known alternating harmonic series version of the natural log of two. And so it is well known that the natural log of two is equal to the sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus one to the m plus one over m. Great. But then next, notice that that's gonna be equal to one minus one half plus one third minus one quarter and so on and so forth. But next we can see that that is going to be strictly bigger than one minus one half because everything that you're adding on past here will sum up to something that's bigger than zero. But one minus half is equal to half and so we end up with our goal inequality of natural log of two is bigger than half. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us. So this claim tells us that there are no values of n for our problem, which are bigger than or equal to 11. Then back to our chart, we see that the n equals 10 does not give an appropriate value of n. We do get a value at n equals nine and n equals eight, but we're only looking for values of n bigger than or equal to eight. So we found all of them. n equals eight and nine are the only values of n that satisfy this rule. And that's a good place to stop.